For our friends in Bon Tom, the day of reckoning is at hand. So before the show meets the sun, Bill, it's loud out. Here's everything you need to know about True Blood. In the small town of Bon Tom, Louisiana, not everyone's what they seem. It's filled with all sorts of supernatural creatures, especially vampires. A few years ago, scientists developed a synthetic blood called, you guessed it, True Blood, allowing vampires to come out of the coffins. Not everyone was pleased. Sookie Stackhouse is a waitress at Merlot's who tends to scream a lot. She has a special gift or problem, depending on whom you ask. One day, a vampire walks into the bar, no joke, and her whole world is turned upside down. His name is Bill. He's a little bit older than he looks and loves saying Sookie's name. Sookie, Sookie, Sookie. After Bill saves Sookie's life, she falls for him instantly and romance blooms. But let's just say it turned out to be a complicated relationship. <laughs> Sam Merlot is Sookie's boss, who has a secret. He's a shapeshifter with a canine fetish. He barks in his sleep. Lafayette is a sassy cook, among other things. His cousin Tara is Sookie's best friend. She has a hard time getting along with others, but loves Sookie's brother Jason. Hi, Jason. Jason loves himself, along with most of the women in town. Unfortunately for Jason, they all start showing up dead. So does his and Sookie's gran. Poor gran. <sighs> Guess who becomes the number one suspect? What the hell's that supposed to mean, Andy? It's Detective Bellfleur. Sookie tries to find the real killer with Bill's help. They go to a vampire bar, Fangtasia. Fangtasia? She meets the irresistible Eric Northman and his snarky vampire daughter, Pam. Bill must make a vampire of his own named Jessica. I'm a vampire! And finds it's not easy raising a teenager. Turns out Jason's friend Renee was the killer all along. He's engaged to Sookie's waitress friend Arlene. He's solid all the way to the foundation. Renee tries to kill Sookie. Bill struggles to help, but she saves the day with a shovel. Seems like the town drama is finally over. Maybe not. <laughs> Tara gets bailed out of some trouble by a stranger named Marianne. Marianne seems great at first and introduces her to her new love, Eggs. But as it turns out, Marianne is a main ad on a mission and puts the whole town under her spell. Jessica falls in love with Jason's best friend, Hoyt. Meanwhile, Sookie and Bill help track down Eric's maker, Godric, leading them to the Fellowship of the Sun Church led by Steve and Sarah Nguyen. They're a fanatical religious group bent on ending the vampire race, and they've even recruited Jason to their cause. Sarah recruits Jason for a whole lot more. Godric is found, vamps and humans have a standoff, and Jason finally comes to his senses. He sucked out my brain and planted all his own babies in there. Well, as best as he can. Godric decides to meet the sun, Eric is sad, we hate seeing Eric sad. Arriving back in Bantam, things have gotten a little out of control. Bill, Sookie, and Sam work together to trick Marianne and save the town. No bull. With things back to normal, or as normal as they get, Bill proposes to Sookie. Will you do me the honor of becoming my wife? But before she can say yes, Bill is kidnapped by werewolves for the Vampire King of Mississippi. Jason kills eggs to protect Andy. Tara is crushed and suicidal. Lafayette brings her to see his mother and falls for her nurse, Jesus, who turns out to be a witch. I'm a brujo. Whatever. Sam finds out he has a brother and wishes he didn't. Arlene falls in love with Terry, but finds out that she's pregnant with Renee's baby. Excuse me? Sookie goes looking for Bill and meets a sexy werewolf named Alcide, who really likes to take off his shirt. Bill goes to Russell's mansion, where he is tortured by his old flame and maker, Lorena. Sookie comes to Bill's rescue and finally ends Lorena's undying love. After Bill drinks from Sookie to recover, he loses control and finds out that Sookie's blood allows him to walk in the sun, for a while at least, leading him to find the answer to the question we have all been asking from the beginning. What are you? What are you? What are you? I'm a fairy? How fucking lame. Eric finds out that Russell killed his family a long time ago. He quickly takes revenge. Russell goes crazy and delivers some breaking news. Now time for the weather. Tiffany? Eric offers him a chance to day walk by using Sookie's blood. It's a trap, of course, and Eric and Bill give Russell a fate worse than death. Did they really think this was gonna work? Eric informs Sookie that Bill has been spying on her for Queen Sophie Ann. Sookie kicks his butt to the curb. Get out of my house. Please. And decides to follow her fairy godmother to a better place. 
turns out Fairyland isn't the paradise she thought it would be. She takes a leap of faith and returns home where things seem a bit off. She's been gone for what seemed like minutes, but was actually over a year. A lot has happened in her absence, including Bill becoming the Vampire King of Louisiana. I hereby pronounce you King William Compton of Louisiana. Alcide is back with his ex, Debbie, and Jesus introduces Lafayette to the world of magic. Turns out Marnie can control the dead, which is not good for all the dead guys walking around. Eric tries to stop her, but loses his mind in the process. Sookie takes in a half-naked Eric. I know I'm a vampire, Snooky. It's Sookie. I mean, who wouldn't? They don't waste much time dealing with some pent-up feelings. Marnie is possessed by the spirit of an old vengeful witch and declares war on all vampires and even makes them walk into the sun. Jason saves Jessica from certain death. There is no way these two weren't going to hook up. But that isn't going to go over well with Hoyt. Sam starts to see another shifter named Luna. Tommy, his brother, who can now skinwalk, uses this to his advantage. Sam and Luna are not pleased, but she has family problems of her own. The fight over Luna's daughter, Emma, continues. Her baby daddy, Marcus, a werewolf, kills Tommy, thinking he's Sam. Alcide returns the favor. The gang bands together to take down the witches, and Bill and Eric break Marnie's spell, or so they think. Marnie goes into Lafayette, who turns out to be a medium who can be possessed by spirits. Marnie slash Lafayette kills Jesus and tries to finish off Eric and Bill. Sookie saves the day with the help of some old friends. In the aftermath, Sookie rejects both Bill and Eric, only to be confronted by an out-of-her-mind Debbie. <laughs> Sookie loses her best friend. In a desperate attempt to save her, Sookie and Lafayette beg Pam to turn Tara. Bill and Eric take out Nan Flanagan and are quickly captured by the authority. We finally meet the all-powerful vampire government, including Eric's sister. They are really close. With Russell on the loose, Bill and Eric make a deal to bring him in. Our lives in return for Russell Legend. The gang fights off werewolves and captures Russell. It all seems a little too easy. Russell has his own plan and wants to rid the world of the vampire authority. Peace is for pussies. All in the name of Lilith, the vampire god. Meanwhile, Alcide fights and wins control over his pack. Hoyt's distraught over the realization that his best friend has stolen his girl. He asks Jessica to glamour him to forget everything and leaves town. It turns out Sookie is betrothed to an ancient evil vampire named Warlow, who will stop at nothing to claim his fairy bride. Andy sleeps with a fairy of his own and has to deal with the consequences, and not just from his girlfriend, Holly. Russell's obsession for daywalking finally does him in as Eric fulfills a lifelong quest. Bill drinks Lilith's blood and is reborn as a vampire god. <laughs> Meanwhile, the governor of Louisiana starts to round up vampires to be studied and tortured. Eric turns the governor's daughter, Willa, in a failed attempt to stop him. It doesn't exactly have the desired result. The governor wants to bring about the end of the vampire race by tainting the true blood supply with a deadly virus called Hep B. Sarah Newland, the real brains behind the operation, moves forward determined to put an end to vampires once and for all. But Bill's blood saves the day and allows the vamps to walk in the sun. Nora succumbs to the disease and dies in Eric's arms, which sends him into a rage. Unfortunately, they were too late to stop the tainted true blood from circulating around the globe. Eric, who is done with loss, leaves to work on his tan. Sookie changes her mind about marrying Warlow, and he is not too happy about it. Once again, the gang has to band together to kill Warlow. Once he's dead, all the vampires lose their ability to walk in the sun, leaving Eric questioning his vacation decision. Andy's daughters are growing faster than usual and turn out to be too irresistible for Jessica to resist. Adeline barely survives. Terry, unable to escape the memories of his past, asks a friend to end his suffering when he least expects it. This event rocks the entire town to its core. Fast forward six months, Sookie and Alcide are happy living together, Sam is now the mayor of Bon Tomp. Bill wrote a book about being a god, Pam is still searching for Eric, Belle Flores is the new Merlots, and the Hep V vamps are on the hunt. You are officially caught up and ready for the final season of True Blood.